Hello, this is a short video which describes the design of a water reuse network with the maximum possible water reuse. The analysis will be limited to water streams with a single contaminant. Let's start with a quick reminder. In a water use process, water enters with a certain load of contamination, comes into contact with the compounds involved in the operation, and exits with an increased load of contamination. If water flow rate is represented with MW, and C in and C out represent the inlet and outlet concentration respectively, then the increase in the contaminant mass load, delta MC, equals to MW multiplied by the difference between inlet and outlet concentration. In an XY axis chart, where X axis is the contaminant mass load and the Y axis represents the concentration, the water use profile of this process can be represented by a single line with the corresponding inlet and outlet concentrations and mass load as the coordinates for the starting and ending point. Moving now to our problem. Let's assume that we have an industrial unit with three processes which use water with the following specification. Process 1 can only use fresh water with the maximum allowed inlet concentration set to zero, whereas the maximum outlet concentration will be 400 ppm when the water flow rate has the minimum value of 25 tons per hour. Similarly, process 2 has a maximum allowed inlet concentration of 200 ppm and a maximum outlet concentration of 400 ppm with a limiting water flow rate of 75 tons per hour. And process number 3 has a maximum inlet concentration of 200 ppm, maximum outlet concentration of 700 ppm with a limiting water flow rate of 50 tons per hour. The objective of our analysis is to design a water reuse system which will minimize freshwater consumption, taking into account the inlet and outlet concentration limitations. We will follow a 10-step approach. The first step is to design the limiting water profile for the three processes. Starting with process number one, the maximum inlet concentration is equal to zero and the maximum outlet concentration is equal to 400, whereas the contaminant mass load is 10 kilos per hour or 10,000 grams per hour. By using these values as coordinates, we can draw the limiting water profile for process number one. Similarly, we can draw the limiting water profile for process number two. The maximum inlet concentration is 200 ppm and the maximum outlet concentration is 400 ppm. The contaminant mass load is 15 kilos per hour, which, if added to the contaminant mass load of process number one, will give the x coordinate for the ending point of the limiting water profile for process number two, equal to 25 kilos per hour. 10 plus 15. In the same way, we can draw the limiting water profile for process number 3. So far, we have drawn the limiting water profiles for all three processes over the system as our first step. The second step is to define the concentration intervals and calculate the contaminant mass loads for each one of them. As we can see from the chart that we have previously drawn, there are three concentration intervals in the system. The first one between 0 and 200 ppm with a limiting water flow rate of 25 tons per hour, which corresponds to the limiting water flow rate of process number one, the only process that can be found in this interval. The second interval between 200 and 400 ppm has a limiting water flow rate of 150 tons per hour, which corresponds to the sum of the limiting water flow rates of all three processes. Finally, the third concentration interval 
between 400 and 700 pm has a limiting water flow rate of 50 tons per hour. Using these values, we can fill in the table of the concentration intervals. The only values remaining to be calculated are the contaminant mass loads for all three intervals. In all three cases, this can be calculated by multiplying the water flow rate with the corresponding delta C. For concentration interval number one, this equals to 25 tons per hour multiplied by 200 ppm minus zero, which equals to 5,000 grams per hour. Similarly, the contaminant mass load for concentration intervals 2 and 3 is equal to 30,000 grams per hour and 15,000 grams per hour, respectively. The next step is to draw the composite curve for this system, using the values for the concentration intervals in a similar way as we have drawn the limiting water profiles. More specifically, for concentration interval number one, the inner concentration is 0 ppm and the outlet concentration is 200 ppm, with a contaminant mass load of 5 kilos per hour. By using these values as coordinates, we can draw the first part of the composite curve. In the same way, we can draw the second part using the values for the second concentration interval, 200 and 400 ppm as the y axis coordinates and 5 and 35 kilos per hour as the x axis coordinates. Similarly, we can draw the third part of the composite curve using the values of the third concentration interval. The pinch point can be found graphically. Its coordinates are 400 ppm and 35 kilos per hour. The water supply line for the minimum water flow rate is a line which begins from the minimum acceptable inlet concentration of the system, in this case 0 ppm, and passes from the pitch point. The minimum water flow rate of the system can be calculated using the only equation that we've used so far, delta MC equals MW multiplied by delta C. Solving for the MW, the minimum water flow rate equals to the contaminant mass load at the pinch, 35,000 grams per hour, divided by the difference of concentration between the pinch point and the minimum acceptable inlet, 400 ppm minus 0 ppm in this case. So the minimum water flow rate of our system is calculated to be 87.5 tons per hour. Having calculated that, the next steps will allow us to specify how to divide this input between the three processes and design the water reuse network. First of all, we divide the system into two design regions, one below the pinch and one above the pinch, with different water supply lines and limiting water flow rates. For design region number one, the minimum water flow rate is equal to that of the system. For design region number two, and for all the regions above the pinch, the water flow rate can be lower than the minimum water flow rate. In this case, it can be calculated using the coordinates of the third part of the composite curve. 50,000 grams per hour minus 35,000 grams per hour divided by 700 ppm minus 400 ppm equals to 50 tons per hour. We have thus calculated the minimum water flow rate in both design regions. And we are now ready to populate the design grid and come up with the optimal configuration for our network. The design grid might look complex but it shouldn't scare you. It consists of the available water mains of the system, represented as the three big rectangles, 
and the processes of the system represented as the three squares. The first rectangle represents the fresh water supply, which equals in this problem to 87.5 tons per hour, with a contaminant concentration, of course, of 0 ppm. The second rectangle represents the water supply at the pinch, with a concentration of 400 ppm. The total flow rate is obviously still 87.5 tons per hour. Out of this, 50 tons per hour will be used as input for the operations above the pins, as calculated in the previous step. And the remaining 37.5 tons per hour will be disposed as wastewater. The third and final rectangle represents the water stream at the outlet of the system, with a contaminant concentration of 700 ppm. So, these are the only three available streams of water in the network at 0 ppm, 400 ppm and 700 ppm. The processes of the system are placed onto the grid based on their inlet and outlet concentrations and their limiting water flow rates. Now, we need to check if and how we can cover the water demand for all three processes. Process number one requires only fresh water, since the maximum inlet concentration is 0 ppm. So, 25 tons per hour out of the total of 87.5 tons per hour of fresh water will go to process number one. The maximum inlet concentration for process number 2 is 200 ppm. However, the available water streams have either 0 ppm or 400 ppm inlet concentration. Thus, for process number 2, we will also use fresh water. The flow rate in this case will not be 75 tons per hour. By using again delta MC equals MW multiplied by delta C, and since the contaminant mass load of the process will remain the same regardless of the input concentration, if we double delta C from 200 to, 7 to 400 ppm, then the flow rate will be halved. Thus, the flow rate of process number 2 will be 37.5 tons per hour of fresh water. The remaining 25 tons per hour fresh water will be supplied to process number 3. These will be mixed with some of the wastewater of the two other processes, and more specifically with 25 tons per hour at 400 ppm, in order to reach the limiting water flow rate of 50 tons per hour above the pins. This means that all three processes will be supplied with fresh water and process number three will be also supplied with waste water from one or both of the other two processes. However, it might be impractical or not technically feasible to change the flow rate in the middle of one process, in this case process number three. The solution to that would be to move the mixing junction to the beginning of process 3 instead of having it in the middle of the process. We have now completed the design grid and we are ready to design our water reuse network. The total supply of fresh water is 87.5 tons per hour and it is divided among all three processes. More specifically, 25 tons per hour go to process number one. 37.5 tons per hour go to process number two. The remaining 25 tons per hour of fresh water mixed up with the waste water coming out of process number one will go to process number three. 
the output of processes 1 and 3 is the wastewater of the system with a contaminant concentration of 700 ppm. And this is the optimized water reuse network of our system. As a final step, we can compare the freshwater consumption of this optimized network with the case where all three processes use fresh water. In this latter case, the inlet concentration of all three processes would be 0 ppm, and the water flow rate would be 25, 37.5, and 35.7 tons per hour, respectively. The total water use would be, in this case, 98.2 tons per hour, which, if compared to 87.5 tons per hour, means that we have achieved water savings of 10.7 tons per hour. The methodology presented in this video covers sufficiently the case with only one contaminant. However, this is rarely the case, and usually there are more than one contaminants present in the outflow of a process. The easiest way to deal with such a problem would be to perform the analysis for individual contaminants and then use the results of the worst case as the target value. Moreover, the methodology presented assumed that the contaminant mass load was fixed but the water flow rate was variable. This might not be always the case in real problems. Certain processes might require a constant flow rate irrespective of the unit concentration or even both fixed flow rate and fixed contaminant mass load. Finally, when designing a real water reuse network, certain factors based on the actual plant should be taken into account. For example, connections between processes might not be plausible due to long distance, or even there, mi there might be compulsory connections between certain processes. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it will help you to better understand the concepts related to the design of a water use network. Thank you.